the history. 1864 is a long time, and the people that I still know, that still follow Williamstown, wouldn't go anywhere else. An era in my football career where I'd probably tell more stories than I do at any other time at any other club. I said to me dad, who was a pretty smart bloke, me dad, so I got a phone call from Williamstown, and he said, uh, they're a great football club. And I nearly fell over. I thought there was only one great football club in the world and it wore a red and black jumper. And that's all he said, just that they're a great football club. As a kid I'd watched those sides play during that time and Jerry Callahan would, he'd have you jumping out of your skin and a young 19 year old kid going down there amongst these legends of Williamstown and just sitting there and he'd get that jumper out and say, this is what it's about boys. You put that on, you're invincible. I played under Jerry actually. We went away with a VFA together at a carnival in Sydney in 58, I think it was. And Jerry was coach, and he was this powerful monster of a man. I was in awe of him because I'd heard so much about him and I knew so much about him. Following in the footsteps of an absolute legend, to actually come and take over the club that he has just left was mind-blowing in itself. Played a practice match at Yarraville, and they spoke to me after the game, but it, it, it really did nothing for me. And then the following week, I played in a practice match at Williamstown, and um, it, it was just such a buzz. And I walked up the race. The first bloke I saw was a bloke called Bob Penny Lane. He was coming down. He stopped me. I introduced myself. He took me back up, introduced me to a few blokes in there, the players, and I got stripped, and that was it. Halfway through the year of 75, Williamstown was having problems because um, Stillman and Whitten weren't getting on and they were looking for a centre man so they basically upped their offer and I decided I'd move over. So about the middle of 75 I left south and went to Willie. I was only a run of the mill VFA player, you know, and I was totally surprised because I'm coming in behind blokes like Papley, Whitten, that sort of thing, so it was a bit daunting to be honest. I was destined to be a Williamstown player from the day I was taken to my first game in the pram. My family were avid Williamstown supporters. In fact, my father followed Williamstown since 1925. So I had to play. As time went by, it just really intrigued me, this place, this country town in Melbourne, which really replaced my country upbringing, my country roots. It was passionate football. A bit too passionate sometimes, but uh, supporters were passionate, the footy was passionate, I really loved it. You felt that with the surroundings of the people that were there after a match, and at three quarter time, so you felt as though you were in an important club. I sort of heard about the VFA being a bit of a thump comp, but uh, I soon realised that my teammates were pretty adept in that category and uh, they, uh, they go plenty back. It was tough footy, you know, it was something I hadn't been used to after being up in uh, East Gippsland and uh, Latrobe Valley football was tough. VFL football was clinical, fast and well skilled, but this was, this was tribal. You don't drive through Williamstown to get anywhere, it, it, it's like a dead end, you know, and the people that are there have been there for a long, long time and there's, there was just so many icons around that club at that time. We never had what's around now in administration and the support, but it was all done by these people that um, just wanted to be there for Williamstown. Yeah, they were great, great people. Part of enjoying football is the camaraderie as well as winning. And it was, if you can do both, it's wonderful. But we had some down years, you know, we, we were getting beaten and flogged, but we hang in there and uh, turned it around. We had a sprinkling of really good players and most players were average to good. Um, but the really good players were, you know, were Percy, Boyd, Fanning. Um, Boxall was always capable. I played centre-half back, which I didn't really like doing that much because I used to think, Shit, you take a good mark of centre-half back, you think, what a waste. You've just got to kick it to someone else instead of kicking goals. And I'm pretty serious about that. Cross was a really seriously good footballer. And then we had a whole bunch of blokes that were just really great team players, triers, um, strong, you know, dedicated. And the saying is, is, is used a lot about uh, there's no I in team 
And whilst I became a manager in my working life, I recognised that team is everything. And I got team from Williamstown. We had a very even group. Um, I don't believe there was any standout stars or anything like that. And I firmly believe with any team that has success, uh, the players have to be mates off the field as well as on the field. It has to be a pretty united group, all for the cause. And I, I believe in, 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 um, in that era, uh, that's what Willie had. And it makes you think about your life, how lucky you were to have such success at a club. Because I know players, we all do, that have played umpteen games. You can't get into a finals match, let alone a grand final. So I was very lucky. After two years at Willie, Footscray asked me to go back and have a tryout. I wasn't interested. I wanted to stay at Willie. The two years I spent at Williamstown were two of the greatest football years of my life. And I think particularly it restored my love of football because I had been just worn down, I didn't really want to be in Melbourne. And the sense of community that I really valued uh, from the country um, was restored in this little club called Williamstown Footy Club. Life puts you on a path and if you've had a chance to play sport at a good club like Williamstown, it can set you up for your life. I was always happy at Willie. It was, look, it was, look, my father hit it on the head. It was a great footy club. The Willie Footy Club is a very unique place and the, the characters that surround that football club are, were particularly unique in that time. I reckon all footy clubs are much of a muchness. We were a strong, always Port Melbourne were a tight group of, group of people, supporters and players. And I think Williamstown proves to me they were the same when I come here. So it was a lot of fun, a tremendous amount of fun. And um, to be able to have that much fun and that much success is very, very rare. Yeah, not young for very long. Enjoy every second. You know, there's been some difficult times. And somehow, some way, it's always survived. And I think that's the community as well. Yeah, I keep getting back to people in Willie. You know, the Arthur Johnsons, the John Groves, Jesse Jameses, Egghead, um, you know, you know, they're just, uh, I love the place. And to, uh, to get that honour last year was, I felt so humble because I just felt that so many people have done so much more for that club than I've done. But how fortunate am I for it to have happened? Be very proud of that jumper that you get. Be proud that you wear the blue and the gold. And if you get a chance, son, go back to the history. Have a look how far we go back. We're one of the oldest, if not the oldest, footy club around. They've tried to get rid of us, and it hasn't succeeded. But, son, you pull that jumper on, you're a man. You can do anything you want to do that you need to do. And that's, that's the important thing.